what you're looking at there is a satellite image taken from space of a large spinning storm in the Caribbean Sea. Notice that it has a very, very distinctive feature. It's got what's called an eye. Uh, the centre of the storm itself appears to be completely free of clouds. Meanwhile, the clouds all surround it, all circulate it. In fact, the fastest winds within the storm are to be found very, very close to the eye centre. Now, the entire storm is rotating counterclockwise. As it moves, it's spinning very, very quickly. So to the right of that storm, it's actually pushing up a wall of water ahead of it. They're actually remarkably simple systems in how they actually function. It literally is a case of air entering at the bottom and air expelled at the top. And as the air enters into the hurricane, a whole series of clouds are formed. And what these clouds are doing is effectively taking water vapour that's been evaporated from the warm ocean beneath and converting it into water droplets. And the water droplets are heating up the atmosphere. Now, hurricanes are tropical storms and they become hurricanes as soon as the sustained winds within the system cross 74 miles per hour. As long as the system is fed from below because of the warm ocean, as long as the air is expelled up above, the storm will continue. They're a remarkable system because there's actually very, very few of them. Hurricane season, as it's known in the Atlantic, stretches from approximately June 1st all the way to uh, the end of November. And you can see the peak occurs in September. In any given year, in the Atlantic, we perhaps get between 10 and about 16 of them. In some years, we might get absolutely none. They follow very, very distinctive paths. Here is an image showing you all the paths of all the hurricanes recorded in the Atlantic from 1851 to present. In complete contrast to the storms that we get, it actually moves in the opposite direction across the Atlantic. Now, if you look at how they develop, you'll see that they just begin in June. They get more extensive than in July. In August, they get more extensive still. The reason for this is because oceans in the tropics warm up over the summer months. A hurricane needs warm ocean water to a depth of about 30 meters. And that water must be about 27 degrees Celsius and warmer. As long as there's warm ocean water below, it'll keep on feeding it. You can see that by September, the tracks are very extensive. And this is the most active part of the hurricane season. They are so destructive that rather than actually talk about these storms in terms of their wind speeds necessarily, what we do is we classify them according to how dangerous they might be. And the dangerous fundamentally relations to their wind speed. So your basic hurricane, over 74 miles per hour, is called a Category 1 hurricane. Category 2 hurricanes, winds are a lot stronger. Category 3, which are probably the most common and most severe, they cause large trees to blow down, mobile homes and poorly built signs to be destroyed, flooding near coast, destroy smaller structures. But the worst of all, of course, are Category 5 hurricanes. These will have sustained wind speeds of 156 miles and greater. These will cause entire houses to disappear. They'll push in a wall of water on the coastline and cause massive destruction. If I want to know about hurricanes and about risk associated with hurricanes, a common way of dealing with it is to find out how often these things occur and how often they strike a given part of the world. For example, the area around New Orleans, where we can expect every 31 years or so, a Category 3 hurricane will come on shore. Category 5 hurricanes are much rarer. Again, we can see for the area of New Orleans a value of 170. That means on average, a Category 5 hurricane will pass over that part of the world every 170 years. And what it shows you is that just about the entire Gulf Coast, particularly Florida, is vulnerable. So this is one of the images of Hurricane Katrina, which you can see here entering into the Caribbean Sea, first of all passing over the Florida Peninsula. And as soon as it passes over the land, it starts to get weaker and weaker. Now you can see there's no eye wall. It's a big circulating system, you see it spinning and spinning, but there's no real development to it. Now it is past the tip of Florida. It's into very, very warm ocean water now. It's been heated from below and it's gathering strength. Now you can see the appearance of the eye itself. Clear indication that the circulation is going faster and faster. And that was just one hurricane in the year 2005. Here's a series which shows you all the hurricanes that would have formed during the 2008 hurricane season. So as the first hurricane formed, it's spinning across the Atlantic, it's called Bertha. Now you can see it's starting to dissolve. It's curling northwards, it's falling apart, eventually drifts away. You can see all the circulation is still occurring in the mid-latitudes, our part of the world, and down below, in the tropical section of the world, the movement of the systems from the African coastline into the Caribbean. Now we're into August, there's Fay crossing over Cuba, then over a bit of Florida, but very few of the storms actually exhibit the sort of coherence and structure of a hurricane. As soon as they do, as soon as they get past that 74 miles per hour, you notice that they're all named. On rare occasions, some of these storms will actually 
recurve and come back to us as regular mid-latitude storms. A very famous one that did so was in the 80s. It was called Hurricane Charlie. It was a very average hurricane. It didn't do much. In fact, the name wasn't retired. In other words, it wasn't considered a particularly significant storm. But Charlie came back to us and then dumped about 11 inches of rainfall in the Dodder River Valley and caused immense flooding into Dublin. So we are connected to these storms in the tropics. And now we're ending the sequence. By November, of course, the sun is crossing over the equator, moving into the southern hemisphere. The heating has gone out of the northern hemisphere. The entire system starts to close down.